Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A mother of five stabbed to death, all while EMT and firefighters were in the next room working to save her boyfriend's life. How can you see a woman just being dragged away violently and not help? My brother did not deserve to die. Tonight, her family demanding to know why someone didn't step in to stop the attack. The scene was chaotic at a home on West Arizona Saturday night on the west side. As fire and medics were giving aid to a man, his girlfriend, who called 911, was stabbed to death in the next room. And tonight, her family is asking why nothing was done. Jason Colthorpe talked to them tonight. He's live at Detroit Police Headquarters with more. Jason, good evening. Good evening to you, Kim. Romyra Washington was 39 years old and a mother of five. Now, Saturday night, her boyfriend was arguing with his son so violently that he went down with chest pains. She called 911. Medics arrived, and while they were working to revive him unsuccessfully, the son came back. He started attacking her, dragging her into the next room, all while medics were working on him. And this is the troubling part in that room. Six men, two of them medics, four of them firefighters. And you know, DC did respond to the change. Detroit fire and rescue crews calling for police repeatedly Saturday night as they tried to save a man's life while his girlfriend's life was being taken in the next room. How can you see a woman just being dragged away violently and not help? The family of Romyra Washington beyond angry and in disbelief. That's kind of cowardly to me. I know that they're not the police, but what does it take for you to step up and help? Fire Commissioner Eric Jones empathizes with the family but declined to comment because of the open murder investigation. Police Chief James Craig hinted at a second investigation today. There are some things that are starting to emerge as we speak uh, that I find it deeply troubling. Tonight, police are also searching for the suspect, 26-year-old Darius Calhoun. I wish that the person who has done this to my mother would be behind bars and in jail. Six men in the same place, some of them outside, and then you watch him walk away and do nothing. She was stabbed 15 times, 15 times. I mean, come on, how could you do that? And you call yourself a man, how could you do that? The people that's supposed to be heroes that protect us, they let her get stabbed, dragged away, and now she's gone. Yeah, the family really struggling tonight. In fact, they're also worried that the suspect might come after them. He is still at large. Uh, and to use their words when we were talking tonight, these five children now in a hole they can't get out of, and they are raising money to try and just simply bury their mother. Uh, there is a fundraising link within this story. Click on Detroit.com. Click on that and donate if you'd like to help them out. We're live in Detroit tonight. Jason Coulthorpe, Local 4. Just awful. Jason, now, we heard Mrs. Washington say in your story, we know that these are not police officers, but is there any protocol on what EMS and firefighters are supposed to do in this situation. There really isn't, Kim. Actually, the only mandate they have is to make sure they stay safe. You got to remember, medics and firefighters aren't armed like police are. They don't know if this guy has a gun, a shotgun, a knife. He did have a knife, obviously, but they just don't know. Uh, it, it's it's really tough when you look at that. You, you don't no one was there and this is an investigation police obviously want to get to the bottom of and the fire department also wants to get to the bottom of this as well yeah indeed. Kim. all right jason andrew johnson richard nixon bill clinton and now donald trump for just the fourth time in american history a president faces a serious threat of impeachment by the house of representatives speaker nancy pelosi announcing the formal impeachment inquiry on president donald trump today saying no one is above the law the inquiry will center on a whistleblower complaint involving the president withholding aid to ukraine in exchange for information relating to former vice president joe biden and his son we talked with Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin tonight and asked her about what changed her mind about supporting this impeachment inquiry. For me, it was never about a numbers game. It was never about getting to a certain point. Um, it was about the specific information that we got, frankly, in the past week. I think it's a game changer. I think it's different. 
Um, and I just don't think, you know, as an army wife, as a, the mom of a, of a stepdaughter who's in the army, I just, I can't have my commander in chief acknowledging that he's reaching out and looking for dirt on his opponent from foreigners. President Trump says he is going to release an unredacted transcript of his call with the president of Ukraine, and we expect that will happen tomorrow. From Washington, D.C. to Lansing, we are just about one week away from a government shutdown if no deal is reached on the state budget. A partial shutdown would mean layoffs for many of the 48,000 state employees. Coco McAvoy is live with what a shutdown would also mean for all the construction projects now underway. Coco? Yes, it means all the construction projects will be halted, but it doesn't mean you'll stop seeing the orange barrels on the freeway. It just means it will take longer to finish these projects. It's that time of year, the dreaded construction season in Michigan. Every place you turn, there's construction. So how much longer are we gonna to have to put up with it taking us three times as long to get to a place? Well, the answer is much longer if the government shuts down because a partial shutdown would halt the 150 active construction projects across the state. I don't think it's right. It's not fair. The MDOT Director of Communications, Jeff Cranson, isn't happy about the possibility either. It's a frustrating time and I think everybody's hoping that um that this can be avoided. Because frankly, it would be a mess. The construction projects would have to be buttoned up to make them safe for drivers. Obviously, we're still hoping that can be avoided and that uh, negotiations this week will uh, keep that shut down from ever transpiring. Some drivers are looking directly at Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Get the construction done. Governor Whitmer, who's like, get the damn roads fixed. But the governor released a statement today taking aim at Republicans, saying, quote, it's time for Republicans to stop playing games and put a real road funding solution on the table. Bottom line, we need both parties to come together and work it out. And the last state government shutdown was in 2009 under the Granholm administration. Reporting live this evening, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. All right, Coco, the countdown is on. Uh, now to a clear and cool night across Metro Detroit after a gorgeous day. Really nice day. Yeah, let's get right over to Ben, though. Uh, he's tracking both showers and some strong winds headed this way, too. Yeah, Kim, and it's that second part that's really going to grab our attention in the morning. So far, the wind's not all that impressive, about five, six, seven miles per hour generally out of the south, but we'll see those more out of the southwest as we get closer to daybreak and those gusts during the morning commute tomorrow could start to reach 30 miles per hour, especially in our west and north zone where those winds will be the fastest. We'll see a secondary peak that will be right around midday. Then those winds will relax a bit as we get into the evening hours. So the windiest part of the day is in the morning. But look at this. We get tornado watches out to the west of us in parts of Iowa and even in the UP of Michigan. That line is going to be moving towards us and that'll bring our showers starting on really lunchtime tomorrow. We'll talk about more the timing of the second half of the day and what your commute home is going to look like in a few minutes. Guys. All right, Ben. A gross yield teacher is now facing indecent exposure charges after allegedly exposing himself while in a parking lot near students. 37 year old Christopher Metzger was inside his car last month in Commerce Park when a parent allegedly saw him engaging in a lewd act. Following the incident, he was placed on administrative leave. He's expected to face a judge later this week. Tomorrow, striking auto workers are going to be joined by Senator Bernie Sanders. Democratic presidential candidate expected to join the picket line at the Detroit Hamtramck assembly plant. Again, that's tomorrow, and that we expect that'll be at 1030 in the morning. The strike is about to enter day 10. The ripple effects starting to hit the suppliers. While progress has been made, uh, we're told at the table there is still no deal. And talks are set, though, to resume tomorrow morning. Well, it may only be the beginning of fall, but it's already time to start thinking about the holidays. Believe it or not, we've got the best days to book tickets for Thanksgiving and Christmas travel coming up. My heart was just racing. I was, I felt so violated at that point. They didn't have control of their own home. What this couple says led to hackers taking over the cameras in their house. But coming up first, it's a program giving abused or abandoned children a way to heal. I was afraid, but I, I got a lot stronger about stuff, and I feel proud of myself. How this summer camp is inspiring hope for foster children here in Michigan.
Parenting is hard from infancy to college and beyond, but research finds that there is one time when moms feel most distressed and challenged. I remember just feeling completely overwhelmed. There was one stage where everything peaked, the bad things, the distress. Tomorrow at 6 a.m., have your kids hit this critical age? Whether they're in it or approaching it, see what experts say parents can do to help ease the stress of this difficult stage. Tomorrow at 5, their brand new furry family member was in trouble. I put him down and he just, just kept slumping over. And then heartbreak. I didn't want to put him through any more of that. Turns out the local pet store where they got him was part of a bigger investigation. We've investigated with undercover operatives and in every instance we found a number of sick puppies. Help Me Hank is on the case and digging deep. See what happens when hidden cameras go inside. Tomorrow on Local 4 News at 5.